When it comes to Linux distributions, of course, there's hundreds of them out there, and it seems like, you know, dozens of them are, are created every year. Constantly new Linux distributions are being created. And the other day I came across this new distribution I'd never heard of. I, I found this over on DistroWatch. This is called SDesk, and this is an Arch Linux based Linux distribution, and it looks pretty interesting because uh, part of its uh, uniqueness is the fact that it is built around its own proprietary proprietary programming language called Blue, and they have a proprietary web browser called Swirl. Now, the distribution itself, of course, is a Linux-based distribution based on Arch Linux, so it is open source, the actual operating system, but if you want to use their proprietary uh, programming language or their proprietary web browser, of course, you can check that out, and I'm going to check some of this stuff out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download the ISO for SDesk19, and I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual machine and take it for a spin. So I created a VM for SDesk. I gave this VM six gigs of RAM and I gave it two threads of my 24 thread Threadripper CPU. So we boot into our live desktop environment. Uh, it's using GNOME as its desktop environment, by the way. It's a customized GNOME that's got some extensions, uh, a really nice looking desktop, really nice looking uh, wallpaper as well. And of course the Calamaris installer immediately launches. So let's go ahead and run through a quick installation. So the first screen is choosing the uh, language for the installer. American English has been chosen for me, which is correct. So I'm just gonna click next. Next up is the location. It has correctly chosen the central time zone for me so I'll just click next on that uh, for keyboard English US is my keyboard it's already chosen that correctly for me so let me just click next and then finally do we want to erase the disk and give the entire drive of this virtual machine over to SDesk or do we want to do some manual partitioning and you might want to do some manual partitioning if you want to create some exotic partition scheme or if you're dual booting alongside other operating systems for me I'm just going to choose erase disk and I'm going to give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine over to SDesk. Do we want to swap? By default, no swap was ticked on, but I'm going to swap to file. So we'll create a swap file. Then I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now let's go ahead and create our username. So my username is DT. The host name of the computer looks like it's going to default to SDesk x 8664 I'll leave that. That's fine. And now I need to create a strong and complicated password for my DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password. And then do I want to require strong passwords? No, I'll leave that ticked off. And then log in automatically without asking for a password. That's actually ticked on by default. That's a, a dangerous setting, logging in without a password. I'll tick that off. I want to have to enter a password to get into any of my computers. And then finally use the same password for the administrator account. That is ticked on by default, and I will leave that. So my sudo password will be the same as my DT user's password. Now I'll click next, and here is our summary location looks good keyboard looks good partition scheme looks good I'm gonna go ahead and click the install button and away we go this portion of the installer typically takes about five to ten minutes on my machine I'm gonna step away grab a cup of coffee I'll be back once the installation has completed and the installation has completed. That was a very quick installation, by the way. It probably took about five minutes or so to install. And then with the Calamaris installer to complete the installation, you need to tick on the Restart Now button and then click Done, and it should automatically reboot your machine for you. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So we reboot our freshly installed SDesk, and of course this is the GNOME desktop environment. Being that SDesk is an Arch Linux based distribution, the very first thing you should do after running through an installation is update the machine. because. On Arch Linux, there's updates every day. This ISO is just a few days old, but it wouldn't shock me if there weren't 100, maybe 200 updates available already. So let's go ahead and, well, let's see if they have a GUI package manager installed. They actually do. This Pac-Man logo here, the ghost from the old Pac-Man arcade game, that's actually the logo for Octopi. Octopi is a GUI package manager available for Arch Linux and Arch Linux-based distributions. You can see, as soon as we launch it, we get an error. Pac-Man database is missing. You may need to synchronize the database. So essentially we need to do a, a Pac-Man uh, SY to sync the, the database. Uh, if we were doing this in the terminal, let's see if Octopi can do this on its own. If I just click the little logo here, checking for updates, 
Will it actually sync the repositories for us? It does look like it will. And there are 108 updates available. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and click install from the drop down menu. Then it's gonna ask for confirmation. Do we really want to run through this update? Yes, we do. And then give it your sudo password and then hit OK. And you can see we get a little progress bar here in Octopi. If you wanted to show each update as it runs in a terminal, you could have chosen to actually show this information in the terminal as well. For me, though, the, this progress bar is fine as long as the installation completes. Now, obviously, if there was an error or something, then I probably would want to go back and rerun this update as a, a terminal command. That way I'd get the proper uh, error message. But it looks like the update's going just fine. One interesting thing is the packages that it is updating. You can see one of them is the Linux Zen kernel. So uh, we are using the Zen kernel here. I guess that's one of the ways that SDesk differentiates itself from standard Arch Linux distributions. That update's going to take a few minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and minimize uh, Octopi. I'm just going to let it run in the background. I want to open a terminal. Uh, they don't have the terminal pinned to the dock, so let me search for the terminal. Now I'm going to actually drag it down here to the dock because I may come back to the terminal quite a bit during this video. So uh, let me escape out of the dash and open the terminal. Of course, this is going to be GNOME's terminal. Oh, and they're using like a default black on white color scheme. Let's go into preferences and change that because I do not want to blind you guys. Let's actually go into unnamed, which is the name of the profile here. Go into colors and instead of using the built-in color scheme here, let's just make it default to a dark theme right now. So by default, of course, it's using GNOME as its desktop environment, and GNOME, of course, on Arch Linux does default to using Wayland, but just to verify that, we could actually check here in the shell. So I could echo xdg underscore uh, desktop underscore session. Well, I guess that wasn't the, the right variable. What, what is it? It's XDG. I could probably tab complete session desktop. Yeah. So luckily the, uh, the shell helped me. It says XDG session desktop GNOME. Well, that's not uh, the display server. So let's do session and tab complete session type. XDG session type gives us Wayland. So I knew it, <laughs> the environment variable had something to do with XDG and session, but I couldn't quite get the words right. But obviously, XDG session desktop gives us the desktop environment. XDG session type gives us the display server, which is Wayland. Had we been defaulting to Xorg, then instead of Wayland here, you would have had a X11 returned. Also, I noticed the uh, shell prompt is rather plain. We don't have any syntax highlighting, so I'm just assuming we're defaulting to the bash shell. Yeah, yeah, just the bash shell and nothing really fancy going on with that shell. And Octopi completed that update. You can see Octopi is no longer running. There's no period or dot underneath the icon. So we have updated our system. Now that we've updated our system, I'll actually relaunch the terminal because I didn't want to run this while the update was going on because I didn't want it to uh, spoil the results. I was going to run HTOP and check system resource usage, but HTOP is not installed. Well, I'll install that here at the command line. You could go into Octopi and install it, but I'll just do a sudo pacman-s HTOP real quick. Give it my sudo password. Now that HTOP is installed, now let's check system resource usage. We're not really using any CPU, which you wouldn't expect to, you know, let it settle down here for a second. Yeah, no real CPU being used right now. Uh, RAM, we're using about a gig of RAM, which is standard for the GNOME desktop environment. So uses about one gig of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this virtual machine. So let's quit out of that. Let's go ahead and check out some of what makes SDesk unique. Probably the most unique feature is the fact that it has its own proprietary web browser called Swirl. So let's go ahead and launch Swirl. It looks like we get a, a neat little start screen here. Now, one interesting thing about Swirl is it's uh, I, I couldn't find any information as far as if it's based on any existing browser engines. I don't know if it's based on Firefox or Chrome or you know WebKit or what's going on with this browser. It may be entirely its own unique thing. Again, it's a proprietary uh, license, proprietary software. So uh, if I can't find any information about it, I mean, I can't really go examine the source code. I don't know if the source is available for this. So, uh, but it is very unique looking. You've got your toolbar or your menu, excuse me, up here. You have your URL bar 
here, which is a very short URL bar for how big the you know, full screen browser is. And then you've got some controls over here, such as I'm assuming that's a search uh, bar, but maybe that would just, yeah, that would, if I had something typed in the URL bar, maybe that would do something. And then this icon here, the folder icon, what does it do? Doesn't look like it does much. <laughs> the X, what does that do? Intelligent tracking prevention. So I guess it's trying to uh, be privacy centric in some way. Although I would say if you're wanting to appeal to the privacy crowd, you probably need to make sure that this is free and open source software at some point because no one's going to take you seriously if you're a proprietary browser and you're saying that you know, you're all about privacy. <laughs> Uh, that's not really you know, the the privacy crowd is not going to uh, like the licensing of that browser, but they're, they have their own proprietary browser. Of course, it's Arch Linux based. You could install something like Firefox or Chromium or Brave or whatever browser. Or if you like proprietary browsers, I mean, I'm sure you can install Vivaldi or Opera or Chrome, whatever you want on this. Some of the programs installed out of the box include Geary for email, which Geary I really like. I, I think it's one of the best. Uh, email clients we have available on Linux. Uh, just tried to launch Geary. It's taking a minute to load. Taking a long time to load, actually. Now, this is a virtual machine, and uh, of course, it, there could be some bugs. I don't know how many releases SDesk has had. This is the very first time I've ever heard about it, so it's probably a rather new project, but I don't think Geary actually launched because it looked like it it stopped trying to launch. Let's launch the calendar. The GNOME calendar launches just fine. We also have music here, which I believe is this rhythm box. Um, heck, I don't know. <laughs> Would, uh, you know, it's just music, music. The GNOME project music 46.0. You gotta love the generic names with GNOME. And of course we have our Nautilus file manager here, which it's not my favorite file manager, but I, I guess it is okay. And then we have Octopi, and this is the ISO that is mounted. I can tell you if I was going to use GNOME as a desktop environment, or really any desktop environment, I don't like light themes, so I'd probably right click on the desktop. Let's go to desktop settings, and let's go to appearance, and actually change this to a dark theme. I think I'd much prefer a dark theme, yeah. That'll be a lot easier on the eyes. Let's go into the menu system and see what else is installed out of the box. Uh, really not much here. We have contacts, weather, clocks, maps. So these are all uh, GNOME uh, projects here. We have GNOME videos. Uh, we have the GNOME calculator, camera. Let's actually see what camera application they are because the default camera application on GNOME used to be cheese but i think they've changed this now so this is camera 46.3 i don't know you know that doesn't tell me what the name of the actual pro like i don't know what the binary to launch camera is i mean is it actually camera let's open a terminal and type camera no. like i don't i just wish i knew what the name of the programs are but it's it's like gnome they don't want to tell me what the name of their actual programs are we have a document scanner of course we have our system settings we have the uh, gnome system monitor so if you didn't want to use something like htop in the terminal you have this graphical system monitor which you know works as well also in applications, we have GNOME Boxes, which is great if you want to create uh, virtual machines. GNOME Boxes is a front end, I believe, to QEMU. Uh, so it's, it's something similar to Vert Manager, which I'm actually using uh, to create this virtual machine you're watching right now. Boxes is very similar, very easy to use. We have the extensions tool. Let's launch that. So this is for our GNOME extensions. So let's see what extensions they're actually using here. So a couple of the ones that stand out immediately, Arch Linux updates indicator, and that's turned on. You can actually see we do have a little updater tool, three updates pending. Uh, that's cool. I actually wasn't aware that Arch Linux had this uh, indicator, or you know, GNOME had this indicator for Arch Linux updates. That's very important on a rolling release to actually know how many updates you have. And of course, we have dash to dock and I click on it we can go to into the settings so if you didn't want the dash here at the bottom if you wanted to move it well for one thing I don't like 48 size 
icons. Let's drop that to 32 pixel icons. And then if I wanted to move the position to the left, which I probably would prefer it on the left rather than the bottom, I could move it over there. But, you know, I'll put it back on the bottom since that's their default behavior. Some other extensions they have are Just Perfection and Light Style. I'm assuming these change some UI elements. Uh, tweak Tool to customize GNOME Shell and change the behavior and disable UI elements. So let's go into the settings for Just Perfection to see exactly what it changes. So you have Profile, Visibility, uh, Icons, Behavior. Well, it looks like it's got a lot of settings that you could play with. I'm not going to dive deep into that. I don't want to mess anything up because I, I actually quite like some of their default choices here. Getting back into the menu system here, we also have LibreOffice. We have, it looks like the entire LibreOffice suite. We have a Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and if I go to the other screen, and Writer. So pretty much the entire LibreOffice suite. Let's go ahead and launch LibreOffice Writer, which is the word processing program. And let's go into help and about LibreOffice. And we know this is gonna be the latest LibreOffice because we just took an update. Yeah, it is based on Arch Linux, right? So this is version 7.6.7.2. So uh, actually move the window there. Other applications available include MPV, which is our multimedia player, it's our video player, which I'm assuming is here probably as a dependency for GNOME's video player. Was GNOME videos here? Yes, it was. So MPV is probably a dependency for that. And we have Octopi and really not much else. HTOP I installed myself, but we do have the text editor here, which is GNOME's plain text editor. If I go to about text editor, this is text editor 46.3. Is this gedit? Looks like gedit. So let me open a terminal. Let me type gedit. Please tell me, no, gedit. So I don't even know what the name of that plain text editor is. I wish I could tell you what the name of some of these pieces of software are. Some of them might be very cool pieces of software that you'd like to try out, possibly on other desktop environments, non-GNOME desktop environments. I can't tell you what any of these programs are because GNOME doesn't want me to know. We have our top panel here. We have our little desktop switcher here, this indicator here for uh, switching between our desktops, our virtual workspaces. Of course, we have the time and date here, which drops this event here, or the, this little window here, which gives us notifications. So we've already had this notification about taking 107 updates We've already done that, so I can just get rid of that notification. Of course, we have our calendar. If there were any events on this calendar, anything planned, that would show up in this area as well. And of course, over here, we had the uh, indicator for Arch Linux updates, as well as our system tray. We have our session icon here, which the session icon would also let us uh, toggle between light and dark style. We also have our uh, power menu here or power mode, you can see it's balanced and power saver. So that might be something worth playing with, especially for those of you that are trying this out on a laptop. A few other things I wanna check. Let me go ahead and launch the terminal one more time and zoom in. Let me do a uname-r. Now, depending on when you install this, because it's rolling release, you'll have a different kernel version. But as of the time I'm recording this video, we are on version 6.9.6-Zen. So they are defaulting to the Zen kernel. Being Arch Linux based, I'm assuming they're using Pipewire for the audio server. So let me do a where is Pipewire and there is the binary to Pipewire. So Pipewire is installed. And when we were going through the menu system, I couldn't help but notice there weren't that many programs actually installed on this, but let's actually get a count. So if I do a Pac-Man dash capital Q lowercase q, uh, that will return a list of all the programs that are installed via Pac-Man. And what I can do is then up arrow, I can pipe this into WC, which is the word count program and give it the dash L flag for give me a line count rather than a word count. And you can see there's 1,118 lines in this output, meaning there are 1,118 packages installed on SDesk. Finally, the last thing I want to check is the wallpaper. So if I go back to display settings, so right click on the desktop, choose display settings. And once again, go to appearance. Let's check the wallpaper pack. Do they have anything cool in the wallpaper pack? It looks like it's just standard default GNOME wallpapers for the most part. Although some of these do look interesting. I don't know if I've actually seen this before. You know, this little abstract art, that's kind of cool. Uh, this one as well looks very cool. I'm not sure if these are standard GNOME wallpapers or not, but they do look very nice. Uh, this one here 
you know, it's not bad as well. Now I would like to go back to the default wallpaper, but I don't see uh, what was the default wallpaper when I first logged in. Uh, maybe if I go to add picture, maybe I can find the default wallpaper. So typically where you'll find the default wallpaper on a Linux system would be user share background. So let's actually go and do a search. Well, actually, let's actually go into the file system. Can I go into the root file system? Will it actually let me search for uh, the root file system? It's in the bookmarks. We have recent home documents. Why can't I navigate to the root file system? There are no controls letting me get there. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I can go back to the uh, to the standard wallpaper. That's that's interesting. So I'm, am I just missing it here? It doesn't. I know it was a green wallpaper. I don't think it was this one here. If I go back to the default light theme, that was not the default wallpaper, and neither was this here. Uh, yeah. So, but you know what? I I can get down with some of these other wallpapers. Uh, like you know this one here, not horrible. So that's a quick and cursory look at SDesk. Again, SDesk, kind of a new distribution. I don't think it's been around that long, so there could be some bugs with it, you know, some, some things they need to work out. But overall, I, I, it looks fantastic as far as it's Arch Linux, which is great. It's GNOME, which the GNOME 40 series, GNOME 46, the desktop environment, has been fantastic. I think it's been probably the best version of GNOME that they've put out since the GNOME 2 series, like, 16 years ago, uh, you know, and I like some of the software choices. I like the fact that they include the Octopi package manager as far as a GUI package manager for Arch Linux. There's really not any that are any good. I think Octopi is definitely the best of that bunch. And of course, they're doing some unique things with, you know, having their own proprietary programming language, Blue, which we didn't take a look at at all. I don't know if it's installed out of the box. I think you'd actually have to install Blue, their proprietary programming language. And then, of course, they had their proprietary web browser swirl which I, yeah I, i've got to admit my first impression of the swirl browser was it was kind of plain and kind of confusing actually just opening it up and there's not a lot of controls to it i'd probably install a proper browser like firefox or brave or something like that if i was actually going to install sdesk myself and actually use it as a daily driver but overall i gotta say i'm pretty impressed now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode matt james steve armor dragon darla Daedalus, GDR, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Arion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, TN Run, War Gentle, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at S Desk would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys. If you like my work, and want to support me, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.